right, it is time. It is time for the return to more Fatal 12. God, I haven't played this game in about a week, at least. Hope I remember how to play. But we are back into it, and uh, I just want to take a little time off to work on some other stuff. If you've been watching the Twitch channel, you've seen some of the cool things we've been doing there. It's a little tough to say what has and has not come up at the time of this recording, because I'm probably recording this about a month and a half before you see it. Nevertheless, we're getting back into it. I could just leave this. I've got videos queued up through June. I don't have to be recording this, but I want to. I want to know what the hell happens next. I want to get rid of this lousy audio setup, which always seems to come in too hot, even though I'm looking at the audio and it seems just fine. Hopefully it turns out all right. Uh, we'll crank up the music on this a little bit because I fiddled with it. But the reason I took some time off is it seemed like a good stopping point. We had a what was essentially the end of the U saga, as I was affectionately referring to it. We've definitely spent time in uh, growing amounts with these characters. Number six was gone before we even knew her name. Ro didn't last very long. Then we had Keiko for about a video and a half-ish, uh, learning her story. We spent about the same amount of time with Sonya. Then, of course, we had a huge amount of time with you and quite a bit of time with Shigetsugu as well. And he was around for at least longer than Sonya and Keiko were. So these little character vignettes have been getting steadily increasingly longer. Of course, with you, it was warranted just because of what he was up to and also our past with him. Quite a bit had to be reconciled, not to mention the, the return of our girl Naomi over on the side there. But now that we're past that, we are starting to get into what feels kind of endgame-ish. Rinka is finally taking this more seriously. Her and Naomi are not just looking into how to win, how to live, but also how to not just win the game, but beat the game, as I've been uh, referring to it. How to deal with Parka. Who is Parka? Naomi's actually been doing some research on different gods and mythologies to try to figure out what the hell is going on here and try to figure out how to game the game. Miharu, of course, is doing her own thing, where she's essentially just looking out for Rinka, not sure if Rinka's going to pull off this more-than-one-person-gets-to-live gambit. So she is continuing her alliance, and I believe that's where we're starting off as we continue the game. Odette and Alan are just going to keep doing Odette and Alan things. Federico and Scale are still kind of wild cards. We don't know much about Scale, and Federico has already started turning on Odette. I don't know, I have a feeling Odette's going to vote out either Federico or Scale next. Vote out Federico because it's in her best interest, or vote out Scale just because it's funny. You know Odette, she just does things to keep herself entertained. Alan is going to keep doing Alan things, but he's also the big target everyone's watching right now, because he's voted out three people. No one else has voted out more than one. But as Rinka is trying to figure out how to game the game and get more than one person to survive. Her and Naomi were doing her their own thing at the end of the last video. I believe we are rejoining Miharu at the bar. Yep. How many times must I repeat myself? Well, at least once, because this is what you said at the end of the last stream. So we are meeting probably Scale and Federico and possibly Odette. Federico for sure. I didn't even voice that line. I didn't care. Work, huh? You should quit that crazy joint. Oh, yes. Federico uh, just loves talking to Maharu and telling her what to do. Oh, yeah. We also got... Was that last stream? That we got a pancake from Maharu for uh, these two? Scale and Federico? I can't remember. That was a time. You should quit that crazy joint. It looked like there's plenty of night jobs around here that pay better, too. She's not doing it for the money, Federico. I gotta remember all these voices again. It's the atmosphere that keeps you there, isn't it? Please, God, no. Yeah, exactly. I'm. <laughs> yeah, that wasn't hard to predict. It's the atmosphere that makes me want to quit, actually. <laughs> Assholes like you two coming in. Maharu finds herself at Milk Crown once more. I guess it's a milk bar. Scale and Federico are perched on their usual seats, no, Odette? Naturally, Odette is nowhere to be seen. I'm not sure how natural that is. She's just not been showing up or they've got her running errands while they plot behind her back well let's find out might I ask where Odette is Maharu heard the details from Rinka but opts to play the fool this is their first gathering since Odette had told them to leave the heavy lifting to her <laughs> by which she means she's going to go around behind their back 
Maharu finds herself curious about the two parties' exchanges between them and today. Surely you're keen enough to realize she's defected. What's more, she took the information I provided and used it to eliminate you. All while cooperating with your friend, too. No, I'm pretty sure, uh... Well, no, no, that's true, that's true. We, uh, we partnered with Odette and Alan to get that last piece of information. So that's not incorrect. Uh, she's probably working together with Alan. Also not untrue. What makes you say that? Ah, oh, Scale doesn't realize. What's the matter? Ah, uh, just a hunch. Rinka can't fight a way out of a paper bag, can she? That comment doesn't sit well with Faharu, but she lets Federico continue. Eh, not untrue. It's not like she was a whole lot of use, even with that gun. Did she even fire the gun? I don't think she did. She just stuck it in Yu's face, and that was it. Uh, the news was talking about some dude that got shot but disappeared. Alan's the only one who could have pulled that off. That's true. Alan would have gotten some camera. I mean, you literally streamed it. Oh, the stream didn't happen because he's... No, but we would have seen the stream. We would still remember it. Uh, good point. That leaves us with the issue of whether or not Odette and Alan are still working together. Rinka maybe as well, but we probably don't need to worry about her. Uh, could swing either way, really. Odette has nothing but praise for his information network. Well, that makes their elimination our top priority. Scale, Federico, and Maharu versus Rinka, Odette, and Alan. Yeah, I was about to say, this is a, a informal 3v3 situation. Of course, the other team isn't really together anymore, but whatever. This is the situation these two are imagining, but Maharu knows this isn't the case. Yeah, exactly. There are three teams, not two. Scale and Federico, Maharu and Rinka, and Odette and Alan. Actually, that's true. There is a, There are three teams of two. <laughs> Maharu is just here tolerating these two and working with Rinka. Yeah, these are the only two people that fell for Maharu's ruse, I guess. Who didn't realize that she was full of crap when she pretended to, to break up with Rinka at the Court of Fate. Man, you two are dumb. Two versus two versus one. Maharu's goal is to obscure Rinka's participation. Wait, did I read that last? It was two versus two versus two. Oh, well. I guess Odette and Alan aren't really together. That's not really a two versus two, yeah. Maharu's goal is to obscure Rinka's participation. Taking both on at the same time seems like a recipe for disaster. I can tell you his cause of death right now, but you still have no leads on his regret, correct? I went through all the public statements and interviews with him thus far, but it's as you say. I mean, if we had his cause of death, that might be a hint to his regret. That would give us a, uh, at least something to work with or some insight into what he might have been doing or things like that. I'm not too sure how much that insight that would have given in other characters. I would say that knowing Yu's background would have certainly helped to identify his regret, but it didn't really say he died in his own terrorist attack. His card just says fire. So who the hell knows what Alan's card says? We don't know what Alan's card says. We know Miharu has it, but we don't know what it is. I've been looking into his personal life, but right now all I've got is information about his family. I have a feeling it has something to do with his family just because of comments Shigetsugu made, because he seemed to uh, get some insight into Alan before Alan eliminated him. His family. His mother died of an illness when he was young, and his father was murdered when he was 16. Oh, damn. Murdered? How'd that happen? Watch that be connected to Federico or Odette in some way. His father was running a small jewelry business on his own. He'd buy up ore from the mines within India, then sell it off to the manufacturing companies themselves. I'm not sure if the money is what changed him or not, but he started to get greedy at some point. He started to loan money out to those who wanted it. And, well, money lenders aren't exactly the nicest people in the world. It's easier to say he was a loan shark more than anything else. That's how bad it got. So, basically, someone with a grudge smoked him? It's his own fault for getting done in, then. Federico's claim held extra weight because he had done the same work as Alan's father during his days in the Mafia, no doubt. Scale shrugs in agreement. Well then, Maharu was able to establish a link between this information and the cause of death she's privy to. Aha! I wonder about... Did, did uh, Alan go on some sort of... some crusade to take out the guy who murdered his father and got killed himself? 
I don't know. <laughs> How much detail could her card possibly go into on account of that? Anyway. It'll be interesting to see what his background is. I didn't mention this during the beginning of the video, but I am very curious about Alan and just kind of what he's about. Because his backstory should be interesting. We, we don't know much about him, but the fact that he was able to eliminate six with not a care in the world and how he let Keiko rile him up and the comments Shigetsugu made. I'm, I'm curious about him. I have a feeling he's more sympathetic than he's been portrayed so far. Or even the comments he made to Rinka when they were uh, spending the night together before going after you. I wonder if he regrets some of the decisions he's made, especially maybe Six's elimination. I wonder if we'll find out more about her. Alan's exploits and using his father's connections after that to build up his company and make a fortune, all while in his teens, are pretty well known. Speaking of his family, he currently has four younger brothers and one sister. His income is what's supporting them, it seems. Wouldn't that make his family his regret, then? I figured that myself, but no dice. That's about all I have, intel-wise. I already tried stuff related to his business and fortune, but nope. You're all I got here, man. His family definitely seems suspect. I won't promise anything myself, but I've already got a butt on the case. He'll get a hefty reward out of it, so I can't see him not coming through. One of your buds, huh? Oh, can't risk revealing my own information here. Think of him as a journalist of sorts. Maharu nods her head once again. I guess I'll be keeping his cause of death to myself for now. Huh? Why's that? My position's no different from Rinka's in the other group. You can cut me off with ease once you think I've outlived my usefulness. <laughs> oh yeah, that's fair, that's fair. After all, they're all allowed to kill us too. Only natural to think like that. I'm fine with you keeping it to yourself until we uncover his regret. Makes it easier to proceed knowing we don't need to worry about his cause of death. I guess us two gotta put in the work then. I'm aware. You're going after Odette, aren't you? Must be tough going up against a former comrade. Uh, you sure know how to piss people off, don't you? Not as bad as Odette, though. Anyway, I already figured out her cause of death. Oh? Really? When did you manage that? Last night. Something came to mind when I was looking at my wounds. Oh, uh, do you want to let that slip, buddy? You're not supposed to know that you two tied to died together. Are you gonna? Are you going to have a, a take back? No. Oh, he's all right. Well, he's just going to be upfront about the fact that they were both in the same place when they died. All right. I can't spill the details since it's related to my own info, but both of us were in the same place when we died. She had a big wound on her stomach back then. Interesting. As you saw, that wound was gone when divine selection kicked off. Easy to assume that was her cause of death. Again, I wonder why the scars on Maharu's wrists are still visible then. They really shouldn't be if this is the way. Like, Parka! Zero consistency, this, this woman. Federico takes a card from his book, allowing both to glance at it. Oh, we do get to find out. The contents reads as follows. Oh, just straight up blood loss. All right. Odette bled out from whatever the hell happened. Maharu and Scale are unable to obtain the card themselves, however? Why not? Oh, interesting. I don't feel like that's been established as a rule. Both understand that this is due to their lack of knowledge as to how that came to pass. Since when has that stopped anything? Since when has details like that stopped anyone from getting a card? I'm trying to think back. I mean, we didn't get our own card because we were wrong about how we died. It ended up being suffocation, not fire or bomb or whatever related. We don't really know... I don't know. We know Keiko got a hemorrhage because of just complications during pregnancy. We know Sonya's card was never really detailed. Even Miharu, when she was eliminating Sonya, made a point of saying details about the illness aren't important. The more people say that, the more important I think they are. Hmm. Use card we were just handed. 
Shigetsugu's card. Odette and Federico just stood on the sidewalk theorizing about it. I guess these guys don't have enough information on Odette to theorize about her. Scale might, because Scale knows her background. I don't know. This, this seems a little bit gimmicky, but I'll allow it for the moment, because I'm not sure what the repercussions are. I'm still wondering about the rule that they talked about in uh, during the second video when they were laying out the rules about being able to stop someone's elimination by eliminating them first. I wonder if that's going to come into play. Like Federico is going to go to eliminate Odette, but Maharu or Rinka are going to eliminate him first. I mean, I was trying to theorize about what might happen or how that might play out, but I can't really think of a situation where we would want to step in because if... The only person that we would try to stop would be Scale or Federico, and the only people they'd be trying to eliminate were Odette and Alan. I can't imagine Maharu or Rinka being anything but okay with that. Hmm. Maybe Federico will eliminate Scale before he eliminates Odette? And then save Odette before Le Odette eliminates him? That would be fun. Anyway. I don't know. We'll have to see. Both understand that this is due to their lack of knowledge as to how that came to pass. So I guess Federico was confident about showing them the card, knowing they can't have it without that information. I still don't know how that was established, but these three seem to just know this. <laughs> well, I'm rather amazed you forgot about that until now. You must be pretty stupid. Ah, uh, shut it. It's, it's hard to remember the important stuff when you're stuck around that beast all the time. You were both at the same place when you died? Wouldn't it be safe to assume she knows your cause of death as well? Well, yep, I figured as much. I guarantee she doesn't know my regret, though. Wouldn't make sense if she did, but opted not to elect me during the last election after I stabbed her in the back. That does make sense. More importantly, you said you've got a lead on her regret, right? I recall you saying that, too. Federico has a good chance of electing her at this rate. Would you mind revealing that info to us? We have info on this? Why the hell would we have a lead on this? Has Mahiro been doing some brainstorming behind our backs? Do keep in mind that I only mentioned having a lead. I don't have a solid idea of what it is. This is probably the best time to reveal it, so I'll go ahead and do so if you're fine with that. I'm fairly sure it's related to the concept of her child. Oh, I should have said something at the time. When Federico mentioned that stomach wound, I wondered if Odette maybe was pregnant. I mean, obviously, any child she's going to carry is going to die when Odette dies, regardless of how Odette dies. But the fact that the wound was in her stomach, like, was she impaled with something? And, of course, her first thought was going to be of an unborn child? It may be an already born child, I don't know. It's just, it's something that came to mind when Federico mentioned the wound being a gash on her stomach big enough to cause blood loss. And more importantly, how does Miharu know this? Miharu makes sure to explain her reasoning. Sophia served as the trigger for this line of thought. Ah, interesting. So it's funny, I like, I like Sophia, uh, Sonia, and I like how, uh, the, like, the time we spent with her and the story, and she was a, she was a very, um, very pure little little cinnamon bun. Very charming little girl. But the fact that things that she said about changing fate and other things like this resonating through the rest of the story is interesting. Odette granted her the opportunity to see the world for herself. She never had to do such a thing. She simply could have forced the information out of Sonia then and there. I'm going to keep calling her Sophia because we're talking from Maharu's point of view. The risk of Sophia revealing her information did exist, but Odette could have handled that in a number of ways. Instead, she chose the most inefficient yet compassionate route. Sophia trusted in that decision of hers, too. Maharu was aware that Sophia was wise beyond her years. She wouldn't have believed Odette so readily. It would have been normal to assume Odette would break her promise immediately. That was a part of the puzzle that just didn't fit, one that led Maharu to a certain theory. Sophia understood that Odette was being compassionate, not by instinct, but because she knew Odette's regret. Oh, did she mention that? Was this something Sophia mentioned? I don't think she mentioned it to us. She may have, men may have mentioned it to uh, Miharu in private. Did we know this for a fact, or did Miharu just kind of suss it out and start connecting the dots? 
Pretty sure I've mentioned before that she's the type to act based on emotions, not logic. She turned down or accept work based on him. Yeah, this is the other comment I was going to make. It's like, yes, this is a nice theory, but Odette also just does what Odette does. Trying to read into what she's doing might be a mistake. That's quite the interesting theory. Though not quite enough to make a card appear just yet. Got the wrong voice there for a second. It's mostly based on, based on circumstantial evidence. What I'm about to say now is my own conjecture. Odette's the type to not let others decide how she lives her life. Isn't that right, Federico? You ain't gonna find many people who refuse to take orders the way she does. Federico gives a clear answer and a deep nod. Scale rests his chin on his hand. He seems to follow Maharu's implication. When he catches Maharu's gaze, he offers his own thoughts. She's unmarried and has no children as far as I know, but assuming a child is linked to her regret, then it might be a case of her not being able to give birth. Ah, interesting. Perhaps due to physical complications. That's an ellipsis. Is there a card about to glow? Nope, damn it. However, no card manifests from his conjecture. You gotta believe, man. You gotta believe. Scale remains convinced they're on the right track, regardless. We're missing something, but I'm pretty confident this is a good lead to follow. All right, I'll have someone dig up Odette's clinical records. Should be fine to stick purely to maternity and gynecological exams. That settles things, then. I'll be going now, so get in contact when you find something out. As I said, I'd rather avoid coming here too often. Wait, wait, wait. I, I don't mind if we go somewhere else, so how about we keep hanging out? Ain't no problem if you leave in the morning. Federico, you slime ball. Can we, can we genuinely, can we eliminate him? I'm not just saying I think he's going to eliminate it next because I can't stand him, but I can't stand him. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you tell him off, Maharu. You're a scumbag, you know that? Maharu shoots Federico an icy glare before leaving. Yeah. She has no idea that both of these men wind up drinking till morning. Not hard to guess, though. <laughs> Rink, Rink is just reeling still from this. Naomi's alive. She's really alive. Back to this. I still can't get over how happy I am. I saw her die right before my eyes, but here I am, able to see her alive and well once again. It's nothing short of a miracle. But at the same time, Yu's remorseful cries after I elected him have stuck with me. Boy, it's been a week I forget to mention certain things. I was going to also mention that too. I've commented before on how people seem to be overcoming their regrets as they die and wondering if this was going to turn into some sort of lesson or something along those lines. Boy, Yu certainly broke that mold, didn't he? Boy, he went to his grave again, screaming. He did not want to go. He had every regret in the world. He did not go quietly like everyone else did. I mean, Ro was a little regretful. We have no idea what Six did, but Sonya certainly came to terms. Shigetsugu came to terms. Uh, Keiko came to terms. Uh, not just that, but we've seen other things happen, like Rinka coming to terms with her own regret, even though she's still alive. It seemed to, to be a pattern. You, uh, boy, uh, yeah, not you. You uh, did not want to go. <laughs> you was like, no, wait, I've changed my mind. And it's like, uh, too late, man. The three cards have been read. Suck it. Very remorseful cries. Those were her earnest feelings. I even experienced the scene of his death. Both of us died on the train, but the manner in which we passed differed. I've already made my decision, though. Those memories aren't enough to stop me now. I don't regret my decision. His life has served as the stepping stone I need to propel myself forward. He's become a stepping stone for your hope? Nagito, is that you? Let's see here. Lionhouse will be back in business starting tomorrow. I've already gotten in contact with my gran about the logistics, and I sorted out all the orders required. All I have to do now is go to bed, but I keep futzing with my phone. Futzing, there's a fun word. I want to talk to my gran for a bit. Mainly because I have nowhere else to funnel all the feelings I've experienced the past several weeks. Like, your grand's gonna understand anything. She did tell me that it's fine to spoil yourself once in a while after she noticed how little I let myself cry in front of others. I should be able to get away with it just for today. You gonna eat a chocolate cake or something? Yeah, yeah. Chocolate cake. Oh no, just talking with Gran. Alright. We ended up talking a lot longer than anticipated. 
So not just texting, but chatting. Well, it was mostly her because she blabbed on about when I was still a baby. It was a topic she'd only touched on briefly before, about the time I was born. Apparently, my parents passed away in a fire immediately after my birth. Damn. Runs the family. She doesn't remember much about what happened herself, by nature of both the shock and how busy she was at the time. No one remembers the actual time my mother gave birth to me. Is this going to come up later? Is this going to be a plot point? Are you going to secretly be related to someone or something? My dad probably would, but he's no longer here either. According to her, I was found crying in the smoldering ruins of the fire. Almost like I magically appeared out of the flames. Gran also doesn't remember when she came to learn my name. However, she does remember that my mom was the one to name me Rinka. As well as the meaning behind my name. It all comes as quite a shock to me. We never touched on the meaning of the name. We've talked about the fact that it has a meaning and she doesn't like it. Or she needs to live up to it. But I don't think we've touched on what it is. Except maybe some minor comments by Keiko? The details of what happened were vague, but I was able to accept it, considering those who witnessed it were gone. I'm well aware of what it's like to spend your days in a daze after a traumatic event. Your days in a daze. My memory lapse surrounding the events that led to becoming a participant in Divine Selection is proof of that. For my gran, this took place 16 years ago. It wouldn't be odd for something to trigger her memory, but as far as I'm concerned, there's no need for that to happen. I might have thought differently last month, but I'm not the same person as before. What makes you bring this up now? Are you talking to yourself? There's a noticeable pause, or she's talking to Gran. Oh, she's still talking with Gran, okay. Usually, usually the type to give a quick and concise answer, so it's rare for this to happen. I hear her mulling it over for a moment before finally speaking up again. Do we get to hear her voice? Oh, no, I guess not. We then finished the conversation off with some small talk before hanging up. She was acting a bit strange. A person's life is a miracle in and of itself. I just want you to know that. Is that what she said? That did nothing to answer the question. She doesn't normally talk like that either. That was the first time I'd heard her say such a thing. There was something about it, though, that set my heart ablaze. Yeah, not just your own life, but everyone else's. We're trying to save a bunch of people here. Hey, it's Mr. Effeminate Dude for the fourth time. It's still Monday. Damn, it's been a long day. Huh, this is weird. I'm aware of what's going on in my dreams, despite it not being Sunday. I mean, it's not that weird. This is the fourth time we've visited this doofus, isn't it? Is he here, or is it going to be Parka? Is it going to be someone else entirely? Is it going to be God number three, because of the stuff Naomi found out? I've experienced this a number of times before. I'm not in the court of fate either. It's almost like another side of the dream world entirely. I also wonder why this is being included. I know, I mean, you you write a game like this. You're writing a story. There's no reason for this dude to be doing the things that he's doing. Like, what purpose is this serving? Is he working behind Rinka's back? Has he got some other objective? It's not long before I hear a man's voice ring out. Same one? Same one. Hey there, been a while or not. Perhaps I'm better off skipping the formalities. You've settled the score with your fate, but the road ahead will be an arduous one. It's up to you to forge your own path from the limitless possibilities out there. Oh, it's time for the past to diverge. It's time for multiple endings. Doing so is nothing miraculous. Think of it as simply riding the tracks of your life and gathering steam achievements. I must admit that I'm finally finding myself interested in you humans. That willpower you possess. How very unique. Oops, I shouldn't waste your time any longer. You're aware of what my presence in your dream entails, I assume. Nope. Literally just a few minutes ago, Simon says he has no idea. It's time to unravel another layer of your memories. We're going back to the stuff the Gran was talking about. Why is this being triggered? And why is this relevant? What are we going to learn? I feel my consciousness fade once again. Baby Rinka time? His grating voice gradually fades into the distance as I fall deeper into the sea of my subconscious. I, I don't know. Someone who looks this effeminate, would his voice really be grating? I don't know. Try to imagine this guy talking like Gilbert Godfrey or something. Bobcat Goldwaith. Flames envelop me. I, boy, this is a familiar scene. Flames powerful enough to flake the skin from my bones. My skin is charred and my lungs destroyed by the smoke. Okay, this is not good. Is this... This is the train wreck? Not the... 
Not the baby times? My life turns to ash. My inability to move even my fingers tells me as much. Blank, 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 blank. I hear someone shouting. They're shouting the same thing over and over again. The voices have eventually swallowed up by the roaring flames. My consciousness has dissipated. By the time their voices fade completely. Short memory. Thanks a lot. What? I mean, there was a lot of damage being talked about then. If that was happening to a baby, I, I mean, I guess we would have... We would have suffered some sort of burns or injuries of some kind. I mean, it couldn't have been that bad considering we recovered. Obviously, the second time around in the train, we died from them. Well, we died from suffocating, but you get it. We were basically dead before that happened anyway. But still, what what was the... Why? Why was that necessary? Another morning where I wake up screaming. Damn you, effeminate Bobcat Goldwaith. This time it's due to a frightful dream. By the way, I also commented on checking for that pendant Leth is wearing. I actually did a little hunting around before recording this stream in the last week just to see if Parka or Effeminate Boy wore that pendant. They do not. So, I don't know. I still wonder what Leth is going to have to do with this stuff. I, 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 don't, I, don't, I don't trust. I don't trust that easy. I don't trust this cat. I don't trust that god guy. I don't, tr I don't trust that lantern sitting over there on that stool. I don't trust nothing. Meow. I noticed Leth lying right on top of me as I think things over. Has Leth been sitting on us every time we've woken up from these dreams? Because he might have. And he is named after the River of Forgetfulness. Like, that's got to tie into something. Maybe we're just hallucinating the effeminate god dude. And it's really just coming up with this lying on top of us and he doesn't even exist. He's not even a friend of Parker's. He's just a dream. I don't know. I noticed Leth lying around telling me as I think things over. I probably read that like three times. I feel like this has happened before. Yes! Just like Simon says. I figure that the contents of my dream are my memories of a specific event. Memories of when I lost my life in an explosion on the train. Memories of an event that had been undone. One that represented just a single possibility. Up until now, anyway. <laughs> we pick Leth up by the neck. What do you know? I'm not 100% sure why. Perhaps the world underwent some changes after my recent actions. There's no clear answer for now, at least. Or maybe you're just remembering from... Those weren't memories of what happened on the train. Which may mean they're memories of a much earlier time. Exactly. Of course, again... The question, what's the context? Who cares? Are you a firebender? Like, what's going on? It's possible they came back to me after what my grand told me over the phone. Yeah, very possible. Something doesn't quite fit, though. I understood what was happening in my dream. There's no way a newborn would be able to form such vivid memories. Eh, you'd be surprised what I get people to go back to in age regression hypnosis, but anyway. What in the world was it, then? Not everyone can do it, but some people can. Meow. N no, Leth. No. You leave. You leave. I don't trust. I ain't asking you, buddy. Yeah. The only response I get is Leth's meow. It throws my concentration off a bit, so I end up petting Leth for a bit before going about my morning routine. Nah, nah, nah. Leth. What is Leth? What is Leth? I do not trust. Stranger danger. Well, just you and me again today. Mal and me go to the rooftop during lunchtime. My dream woke me up pretty early, so I had enough time to make my own lunch. Meanwhile, Mal was eating a fruit sandwich, and pan, and strawberry milk to wash it all down. Fruit sandwich? At first I registered that as fruit salad, but a fruit sandwich? Like, pears on bread? Like, what? What are you doing? I need to know what this is. I feel my heart clog just looking at that lineup. My sweet tooth's been itching today. So she says before she starts to munch away. Mara didn't come to school today. I was a bit worried at first, considering this happened right after we had our little fight, but she did message me, telling me not to worry. Granted, telling me that without explaining the situation is going to make me do the opposite. I know it's best if I stay put, though. The last thing I want is to mess things up for her while she's dealing with Scale and Federico. I make plans to hit the library with Naomi after school. Yeah, let's do some more Parker research. 
I wasn't sold on the idea when I first asked her, but I figure our school's old enough to have some potentially worthwhile information hidden somewhere. Of course, I've still got to work at Lion's House as well, so the plan is to grab a number of books related to design and such and borrow them. Design? There you go, being all pensive again. Oh, sorry about that. I get started on my own lunch after Mao snaps me back to reality. Oops, there goes gravity. I'm not accustomed to making my own lunch, but it's pretty good, all things considered. Spending time like this, eating and chatting with Mao, helps me realize that I haven't lost my regular life yet. Hey, Rini! Mao cuts off the small talk all of a sudden. Her tone grows far more reserved than usual. We were in the middle of half-heartedly discussing a shoujo manga, but I make sure to give her my full attention now. I'm not sure what you three are up to, and I ain't really concerned since you still hang out with me. But the thing is, I can tell you've all been acting really weird ever since the end of Golden Week. And our plans to hit up karaoke, go bowling, or maybe even go to the movies or all aquarium, they all kind of went poof. When did we agree to bowling in the aquarium? <laughs> During the week off. Oh, just thinking ahead, maybe? Always good to have a bunch of things you want to do. <laughs> oh, no, never mind. She just imagined them. Mao is like our Odette. Mao hesitates before she continues. Uh, you know what? Forget about it. Kind of lost what my point was going to be anyway. Yeah, okay. Both of us nod in agreement. We see each other a good amount already anyway. Following that, we return to our small talk. The discussion continues even after the bell rings and we make our way back to class. What was that about? What was that aside for? What was the meaning there? Having taken the day off from school, Maharu finds herself in one of Shinjuku's expansive parks. Why is Maharu here? And what are we going to find as Maharu? It is a park near Lion House, a park dear to Rinka. Rinka isn't the one with her, though. What? Good God. It did say Maharu, right? And also, final destination, we learned from Rinka and effeminate Bobcat Goldwaith that this is the final destination for everybody. How does Odette... I guess everyone did learn that and we just forgot. We were actually the odd person out, so everyone does know this is the final destination. Still doesn't explain why we're here together. When did you realize it referred to this place? Ain't no way I just up and realized it. Had to do some research, although it didn't take much. Clock towers like that one ain't too common in this country. Ah, uh, sorry, maybe that was a silly question. Even you would struggle to connect the dots in a foreign country based on intuition alone. Why, this is a really odd pairing. Like, just why? Mahara seems to be playing some dangerous games here. Because she's doing the scale Federico thing, but she's trying to hide her association with Rinka. But now she's also doing this. I mean, are you going for uh, going for some ramen with Alan later? What's what's up here? Both Maharu and Odette set their eyes on the clock tower in the distance as they talk. Neither bothers to sit down. Their situation will come as no surprise to those who know Odette well enough. Maharu was making her way to school as always when Odette showed up all of a sudden, as she does. All that followed was a simple request for Maharu to come with her before dragging her along by force. Also sounds right. While that made it obvious how she must have treated Federico, Maharu still finds herself on edge. Her own wariness would prove meaningless, though. Oda just wanted to visit an art gallery. This woman. See, Rinka is starting to take things seriously, and, and Odette is starting to be the all, uh, hey, let's have some fun. It just... Maharu figured that denying her proposition would require too much effort, so she opted to join her. They didn't go for the standard displays, however. Their sights were set on the seasonal art exhibition. It focused on easily one of the most famous, famed artists of all time, Van Gogh. Mahari wasn't too familiar with the arts. She subscribes to the belief that expanding one's knowledge should take precedence over enjoying others' creations. Fair point. This school of thought clearly doesn't apply to Odette. There was a look of nostalgia in her eyes when she was taking in his works. It was a complete contrast to her hearty self. While born in Holland, Van Gogh spent most of his days in France. Many of his paintings used France as their motif, too. Maharu wasn't convinced that the look in Odette's eye was fueled solely by memories of her homeland, though. Odette eventually stopped in front of a painting of a farm village titled The Harvest. 
She spent over 30 minutes staring at it. It was almost as if she had lost herself in the painting. Are we just... I don't know. Are you subconsciously volunteering regret bait here? Are you actively trying to throw people off as to what your regret is? There's this one... Uh, I'm not going to remember it, but there's this paragraph in the first Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy book about Zaphod where Trinity is just like, I can't tell when he's being stupid, acting stupid, acting like he wants you to think he's stupid, or... I don't know. I, I, I get that vibe from Odette. Like, she's all over the place. Like, what are you doing, woman? Mahara makes no attempt to speak to her during that time. She had every opportunity to leave, but she never took it. She never was able to figure out what Odette was thinking. No one ever can. However, that moment made Odette feel truly human to her. She's human. So is Alan. That's why I like him. They're not just bad guys. They, they are human. They have their own, you know, motivations and soft spots and all this other stuff. They still need to die. But they're, they're people. It was the same sensation as when she learned of the compassion she showed to Sonia. See, now you're calling her Sonia instead of Sophia. you got to have some consistency here. I don't mind you constantly calling her Sophia, but make it, uh, you know. I bet you weren't expecting to see me like that. No kidding. The extent of your knowledge is no secret by this point. But I figured you're the type to snub the arts. Who knew you'd stare at paintings with the look of an entranced child? Damn right I am. Ain't no one gonna focus on the present in the face of true art. Odette casts her eyes to the sky as she speaks. A gentle breeze flows past us, bringing with it a murder of crows. <laughs> Thankfully, that was the only kind of murder that came. Odette's choice of words leads Maharu to a certain idea. You must be aware that we're closing on your regret, right? Don't tell me you called me out because of that. Ah. Similar uh, thought patterns as me. Wondering if this behavior ties into that, or is a throw-off, or what? Yep, hit the nail on the head, kid. Chances are Federico's gonna figure out my cause of death soon, too. So you came to me because I'm the easiest to discuss things with? Wait, negotiation isn't a tactic you'd use. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maharu fires a glance at a glare at Odette. She's on high alert now. You're not gonna deck me, are you? At the same time, her alarm serves to trigger her nerves. Relax. I ain't planning on doing anything to you. Divine Selection is just a big game in the, to me in the end. If I win, I live. If I lose, I kick the bucket. If the road's coming to an end, then all I gotta do is enjoy it till then. I'm fairly sure the people you've eliminated never saw it that way. Sophia in particular. See, there we go. Then again, I don't have much of a right to say that myself. You have both eliminated someone. Yeah, Miharu in particular, who was the one who eliminated Sophia. Maharu trails off, shaking her head. Odette just eliminated Ro. Odette and Federico may have been the ones who led Sophia to her elimination, but it was Maharu who ultimately carried it out. Yep. Her reasoning, however important it may be to her, will never change that fact. Don't you want to live? Sure as hell I do. The more exciting stuff there is left to do, the better. Here's the thing. My regret ain't something I'll ever be able to achieve, so I ain't got no issue with dying. Life itself's been something of a game to me anyway. My regret ain't something I'll ever be able to achieve. That could... They could be... Okay, I guess they can't be on the money about her not being able to conceive, because if they were right, they would have got a card. Hmm. In fact, you can't change shit, no matter how much you level up. <laughs> Life is a game, so level up. So my feeling that something was off proved correct. Your body is... Don't worry, I'll talk. Consider it a freebie. Oh! Oh, is Odette gonna get eliminated next next round? That would be... That would be unexpected. The place I was born resembles the village in Van Gogh's The Harvest. It was the big old countryside stuck way in the past. Oh, hey! Okay. The young adolescent Odette. That was a picture I didn't think we'd see. Odette shares the story of her past with Maharu. Maharu takes it all in. There is no hint of sentimentalism as Odette reveals both her past and regret. What? Why would you just give it up? That's not much of a game. Reveals her past and her regret? Really? 
In fact, it sounds the same as if she were telling an inconsequential story. Maharu finds herself unable to say anything for a while, even after Odette finishes. There is no easy way to sum up what she's just heard. As a fellow woman, Harsh doesn't begin to describe it. I think I've lost the right to ber I think I've lost the right the berate Rinka now. Game, I got enough uh, trouble reading this stuff without you throwing the typos in, alright? I think I've lost the right to berate Rinka now. The first thing to emerge is criticism toward herself. Odette lets out a hearty laugh when she hears that. Feeling sympathetic, are we? No, I just don't quite know what to say to you. Odette's complete lack of emotion toward her own past strikes fear in the heart of Maharu. She shows no sign of either sadness or anger. Well, now we gotta know what it is, game. Odette is a broken soul. That's how Maharu feels. The reality that her regret would elude her for her entire life likely took its toll on Odette over a long, long period of time. Why did you share this with me? Because you've got the right idea about what it takes to be strong. I'm not quite sure what you mean. Maharu gives up trying to follow Odette. Yeah. The concept of enjoying one's self holds more meaning than it is imaginable. Maharu understands that much. She gets the hidden meaning behind doing what one can to enjoy the present. That's why she can't figure Odette out. Now, there's a lot of reasons why we can't figure Odette out. Just so you know, you're going to be Scale's target during the next election. Yeah, I, feel, I had a feeling there was going to be some, some other backstabbing coming up. There's no way everyone is just doing what they say they're doing. I mean, we're all... We're all effectively enemies, so this does not shock me. I reckon he knows you and Rinka are still buddy-buddy, but he's letting you off the hook for now. The eighth round will probably involve Federico electing me and Scale electing you. He'll be able to achieve his goal by getting Alan's cause of death card from you after that. Actually, that does make sense. Why try to convince Miharu to give you Alan's cause of death when you can just make her give it up? That would bring our numbers from... Six down to two, if that were the case. It would be Federico, Scale, Allen, and Rinka. The question is, can they eliminate Maharu? We can stop Federico from eliminating Odette if Rinka can eliminate Federico. We don't have any info on him besides his name. But if we could vote out Federico, it would stop him from voting out Odette. If Scale votes out Maharu... Oh, no, we could vote out Scale. Oh, this was oh this was another theory that I didn't mention. Because we have Scale's regret. And Maharu, I believe, claimed to have Scale's cause of death. If we put those two together, Rinka could eliminate Scar. Or Scale, I mean. And that would undo any elimination he does. Because he's after us on the clock. Which means we would save Maharu. Odette giving us this information now. I have a feeling that's gonna that's how that's gonna play out. We're gonna find this out. We're gonna We're gonna decide to believe that Scale is gonna vote Maharu out next round. And that's gonna cause Maharu to talk to Rinka about it, and Rinka's gonna be like, well wait a second, if we've got his cards, F that guy. That ain't happening. I was wondering when that rule was gonna come into play. It sounds like it may come into play next election. Alright, alright. The eighth round will probably involve Federico electing Scale, or me and Scale electing you, blah, blah, blah. He's basically already done with you. Excuse me? There's that short arm again. I feel like it should be longer. There's this tidy little arm attached to, to Maharu there in the art. Maharu fails to hide her surprise at Odette's sudden claim. Not over the idea that Scale is done with her, though. I know he's in possession of my regret. Oh, wrong voice. I know he's in possession of my regret card already, but when did he get a hold of my cause of death? That cunning of yours backfired. The fact that you always keep those wrists of yours hidden answers your own question, I'd say. I was going to comment on the fact that she was wearing gloves now. But, uh, the fact that someone picked up on that is interesting. No way. Maharu rubs her wrists on reflex. Whenever Maharu wore long sleeves, they seemed to be intentionally longer than usual, and when with short sleeves, she wore gloves. And that she does to keep her wrists concealed, even when stretching out her arms. But still, look at o o Odette's got no scar. 
Parker, you're a bitch. In cases where one might be able to get a peek, she would use her bag, card book, and even her other hand to keep them concealed. Ain't unusual for kids in puberty to slip their wrists. Take that, plus a quick background check, and it's easy enough to figure out your cause of death. Even so, wouldn't these guys come to the same conclusion I have? And even if they did realize that Maharu might be hiding her wrists, why would they think there would be any scars there in the first place? Because we don't have scars. Rika has no burn marks, and uh, Odette's got no scar, and uh, I can't remember the other ones off the top of my head. You, obviously. Hmm. Game, I'm calling shenanigans. She shouldn't have scars on her wrist. Even more so for a guy like Scale. They let you wear long gloves at that whatever cafe where you work, don't they? That's pretty rare for restaurants. He even took the time to pay you a visit with her to confirm his suspicions. Oh, okay, so there was a meaning behind that. Interesting. All right, all right, all right. It's a bit frightening just how much you know. I ain't gonna take that from the girl who figured out my regret from a minor decision I made. I don't get it. Why tell me all this? I assumed you'd find some fun in knowing the person responsible for your elimination would get a taste of their own medicine. Ah, come on. Just watching you realize, and realize that others have seen through your weakness does the trick for me. Let me process that. Just watching you realize that others have seen through your weakness. I guess. Scale's keen when it comes to other people's weaknesses, which is why he's so good at gathering intel. You're kind of similar to him, but fundamentally different. Let me say this loud and clear. I love you, kid. I mean that romantically. Fucking what? <sighs> Odette is just a walking stream of consciousness. What the hell? Like, why? Is, is this not the first time you two have even spoken directly? Aside from Sonya's elimination? That ability to yours to zoom in on the weak side of others makes me fall for you. Granted, I've been interested ever since you beat me to the punch during the fourth round. Doubt I need to explain why I'd want someone like that to live now, do I? Where did that come from? <laughs> I'd much rather you not toy with me. Man, all the women are thirsty for all the other women in this game. Jeez. Uh, but this does paint an interesting scenario. If we... If Maharu were to... Oh, that's actually interesting, too. Because now we might have to end up with a chain situation. If Federico votes out Odette... But Maharu beats him to it, and then Scale votes out her. Does that get undone? Because that would technically save Odette's ass. But then we would undo that elimination as Rinka. Oh, this next... I've been waiting for one of the elections to be a complete shit show, and I have a feeling the next one coming up is going to be chaos, and I'm all for it. I'd much rather you not toy with me. Maharu loses her composure due to Odette's sudden confession. I mean, Odette also just might be lying to get a reaction. She pouts a tad, averting her eyes from Odette, who continues after that. I ain't joking. Me and you, we're both weak. Weak people are always going to attract one another. Besides, I swing both ways. <laughs> so long as the face and body do the job, I'm down. <laughs> Guess you can say me and Federico are similar in that regard. I'm sorry, but I can't accept your feelings, assuming you're actually serious. Rink is the only one my heart has room for. One side it loves, just another side of being weak. Though I gotta tell you, that girl probably ain't into what you're looking for. Oh, please, I'm not looking for anything. Heh, <laughs> I know. Odette follows her sarcasm up with a serious expression. That sudden switch frightens Maharu a bit, but she takes every effort to show her own fortitude in the face of it. Don't make the girl you love sad. You get what I mean, don't you? Painfully so. Maharu nods while answering. She made the decision to offer her life for Rinka's sake. Yet she knows that decision will not result in Rinka's happiness. Just letting that Federico dumbass elect me ain't no fun, though. Want to help me out a little in exchange for turning me down so fast? <laughs> Odette, Jesus. I love this character. Odette explains her plan without waiting for a response. Uh, again, I think that's going to be the situation. If Maharu elects Odette, then Scale can't really elect Maharu. At least not yet. Without knocking out Odette. And of course, Maharu's not going to have any compunction about revealing her cards because she 
people already know enough to eliminate her anyway, so what's she got to lose? And then Rinka needs to do something. But it would be interesting if instead of Federico eliminating Odette and Scale eliminating Maharu, instead we had Maharu eliminate Odette and Rinka eliminate someone else. Like maybe Federico or maybe Scale. Because again, we have his regret card. If Maharu and Rinka both have Scale's cards between them, then that can happen. While the idea takes Maharu by surprise, she nods in agreement. So a girl. Knew I could count on you. Of course you can. All right. I better not see you in hell, you hear me? Don't worry. The only place I'll end up is at Rinka's side. Ha! <laughs> Making me all jealous over here. Anyway, it's been a pleasure. Adieu. She said it at the same time I did. Leaving Maharu with those final words, Odette walks off. Maharu collapses onto a nearby bench in an effort to calm herself down. What is this plan? Once she settles down, she remains there until sunset. We're not going to find out until next video anyway. Odette's comments about weakness leave her deep in thought. I want to learn Odette's history. You can't just tantalize us with that and then not give us details. But we are going to find out later. It is about time to wrap up. Is it still Tuesday? Wednesday, okay. Oh, Maharu talking to Naomi. These two aren't supposed to be getting along, or at least they don't have, they have reason to avoid each other. Does this plan involve Maharu? Is Maharu taking another plan in another direction? Things, see, we're starting to get into this, uh, this, this Game of Thrones level of politics <laughs> between the characters where people are just making moves and making moves behind the other moves and their moves are, you know, set the stage for other moves and, uh. I'm enjoying it. This is good. This is what I was looking forward to. Hopefully things get really interesting as we close it on the next election. But it is time for the video to wrap up, so I hope you guys are enjoying it. Take care. I'll see you next time. I hope you guys are enjoying the video as well. Make sure you're uh, following all the usuals, and I will catch you later. Have a great week.